sound speeds. And here's a question you may have pondered before. Will 48 volts phantom power hurt your dynamic microphones? Well, as with many other sound questions, the correct answer is, it depends. Not all microphones sound the same. Shocker, right? Mind blown! A Neumann U87 and a newer NW700 are not going to sound the same. Well, thanks a lot for that, Alan. I really appreciate your professional sound guy wisdom. Where would I be without you? Seriously, though, it all starts there. A handmade microphone made from premium precision-made parts in Germany is not going to sound the same as a microphone thrown together from mass-produced modules made in China. Believe it or not, though, price is not always an indicator of quality. Consider this. If I were to gather together a bunch of cheap Chinese microphone modules and turn them into microphones at a warehouse in Antarctica, I would have to sell them at Neumann prices in order to turn a profit. On the other hand, the Australian dollar is not valued as high as many other international currencies in the world market. Therefore, Rode microphones are far cheaper than the quality indicates that they should be. A microphone manufacturer can make good-sounding microphones inexpensively if they know what they're doing and have the resources to do so. But it's very rare that you'll find a great-sounding microphone that's dirt cheap. But it's not uncommon to find a good or even a very good-sounding microphone that's inexpensive. Some microphone manufacturers may cut corners and save money by reverse engineering other products, while other manufacturers might just not have a research and development or testing facility. But that's not to say that if you produce microphones in bulk, you can also lower the price by doing it that way. There is a diminishing return on the money you spend versus the quality you receive, and it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. For example, one manufacturer might be able to produce a good-sounding microphone for $20, a very good-sounding microphone for $50, and a great-sounding microphone for $100. You see the diminishing return there? The more money you spend will only give you a little bit more fidelity and quality in that microphone. Now, that's the reason why some of the most expensive microphones in some manufacturers' catalogs are hundreds or even thousands of dollars more than the second most premium and expensive microphone in their catalog. The Behringer XM8500 is a good or a very good microphone, depending on who you talk to, and at the time of this video, it is only $23, so it sounds pretty good, it has a pretty good build quality, and it's cheap. So is it possible that they could have cut corners someplace? In my review of the Fifine K6 and K8 microphones, I point out that if you engage phantom power, the K8 suddenly sounds like garbage. If you engage phantom power, like I just did, your voice does not sound good on it anymore. And because it doesn't require phantom power, you shouldn't be using it at all with this microphone. This Behringer XM8500 has a very aggressive reaction if you enable phantom power on it, and it's not enabled at this time, but it is engaged now, and while you might not be able to hear much of a sound difference, there is something going on underneath this windscreen that you might want to be aware of. If the windscreen is loose at all, or perhaps cross-threaded, it can produce sparks. In fairness, the windscreen was very loose when I shot that B-roll footage. Now, will those sparks hurt you? Well, they're not going to kill you or send you to the hospital, more than likely, but it could get your attention. And just so it's been said, if you use a microphone activator like the Cloudlifter CL1, the SE Electronics Dynamite DM1, or the Triton Audio Fedhead, then you have nothing to worry about. Sure, they require phantom power to function, but they do not pass phantom power onto the microphone, so you're going to be completely safe there. So will 48 volts phantom power destroy your dynamic microphone? Well, most likely if you're using a more premium dynamic microphone, it's going to be built in such a way to resist phantom power from actually damaging the microphone. But the more discount versions, well, let's just say that it is not going to do it any favors. Now, it could perhaps change the tonal quality of the microphone or maybe even be frying it from the inside, even if you don't feel it to your hands or lips. But again, I don't recommend you actually enabling 48 volts phantom power unless you are using some sort of an active dynamic microphone or a microphone activator. I did put links to the Behringer XM8500 and what the heck, the Fifine K6 and K8 and the microphone activators that I showed just a moment ago in the description below. So if you're interested in any of those, please consider clicking those affiliate links. Now, thank you for tuning into this episode of SoundSpeech. You be sure to tune in the future for more useless sound information, interesting tests that you might not find otherwise, and sound advice. 
Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.